Don't burst my bubble. That's a no-brainer, and this one's a little hard to believe. Today, we're breaking down and reacting to all of the imaginative medical scenes and gnarly injuries from Happy Tree Friends number 13. Let's dive right in. Nice! Candy coin machine. I don't know if they have these anymore. I don't know how sanitary they are, so to speak. Do you even know what this is? Let me know in the comments. Oh, there you go. Now you gotta be careful not to eat any shards of glass because it'll cause a significant laceration in your mouth. Once they get into your stomach and your intestines, if they're small enough, they actually probably won't cause a laceration. Oh, jeez. We get a lot of people that come to the emergency department swallowing foreign objects, screws, nails. If it is in the stomach and it's too large to pass through the intestines, a gastroenterologist will actually come into the hospital. You'll be admitted and you'll have an upper endoscopy done to grab it out of there so it doesn't cause a bowel perforation. Oh! Ah! A lot of broken teeth. We call those like dental fractures. If the tooth comes totally out and you have the tooth, we can put it back in place if it's within 90 minutes. If it's just a chip, we can just cover it with the different types of epoxy so it doesn't cause laceration. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where all his teeth have gone. If you can find the teeth and they still have the root in them, you want to either put it in milk, Hank's balanced salt solution, or just in your mouth and bring it to the hospital. Oh, look at this, appropriate laceration repair. You have suture, which is like the nylon material, or it could be of the absorbable kind versus steri strips, very sticky type of material that can approximate wound edges. Oh, stop, drop, and roll. Don't be running around like that. You can even use that carpet slash rug that's there. Somebody rolls that around you to just smother the fire. That's good. See, somebody wrapped the tablecloth. Oh, stop screaming. The screaming is going to bring the flames into your mouth, which is going to burn your mucosa, which then you're going to potentially have swelling of your airway, and then your airway is going to close. Just open the doorknob. Oh my gosh. An axe to the head. We do see these occasionally. They usually cause blunt trauma with a laceration to the superficial tissue, skull fractures, and they get wedged in just like they would with a piece of wood. Now, if that does happen, don't take it out. Get to the hospital ASAP, and then they'll take it out there. Oh my gosh, come on, the ladder falling and splitting the body. Very interesting. We're seeing like the brain tissue, super cool. A couple teeth, you see the tongue. Oh no, the gas gauge. Just siphon and put gasoline on the fire. What was that? What the hell was that? That just went through the back of his head, taking the brains out. Do we have that much blood pouring out the back of our head if it actually opens up? Not that much. It actually does have blood usually related to a little bit around the brain and then also the skin, the muscle, the fat. Yep, there you go. So there's something bad was in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Give me something straight into the head. Yep, form body into the eye itself. Don't remove it, leave it, stabilize it, get somebody to the hospital. You'll have some bleeding. We got a bleeder! But if you remove it, you're gonna lose all of the fluid in the eye and it's gonna drain out super fast. And you need to see an ophthalmologist to fix the defect and make sure that you don't have any major structural injuries. <laughs> a little mouth to mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're doing rescue ventilations on an individual, it's not just going in the lungs, it also could be going down the esophagus into the stomach causing gastric distension and the belly just gets huge and big. So when we end up intubating somebody, we actually put a tube into somebody's stomach so you can actually decompress it. Oh my gosh. So people will come into the emergency department and say, hey, I'm going to explode. <laughs> I've seen some really distended intestines in my life and they haven't exploded. 
trying to do the look, listen, and feel. See if somebody is breathing. So you look to see if their chest is rising. You put your ear and your cheek to the side of their mouth to see if you can feel air movement or hear air movement. When people come in with visual changes, we ask if you're having double vision versus blurry vision. Typically, if it's two images, I'm seeing double here. That means your eyes are just not working together versus blurry vision. There's other factors that are involved. Oh, bleeding out of the ears. When somebody bleeds out of the ears, you think about ruptured tympanic membranes, AKA the eardrum. And then you always worry about something even worse where you're having like brain bleeding. Take the headphones off because it's too loud. No. Nope. Too loud a volume of music to your ears is going to cause ear trauma damage. Damage to the receptors, to the nerve endings. Is it going to cause you to explode? No. Could it cause enough pain to your ears? Yes. Yeah, what the heck? The heart looks pretty good. I mean, the vessels are kind of wonky and all over the place. They don't really look like that on the outside of the heart. Did a good job of the other attachments. Oh my gosh, try to shove it back in. Oh, we got kidneys. We got a kidney that maybe looks like a stomach. I don't know what the white looking potato organ looking thing is supposed to be. I have a hard time in back there. What a bad mattress, that's all I gotta say. Lasted a couple seconds without the organs in the body. Just what I said. They did a good job, at least on that. <gasps> oh my gosh, that looked disgusting. It's either sewage coming up, bad diarrhea. I don't know. Sometimes if people vomit a lot, you can get the bile to come out. And some people's bile is green, some is yellow, some is brown. Just depends on the individual. Sometimes when you're hyperventilating, you're blowing off way too much CO2. The point of the bag is actually to keep some of that around to rebreathe it. Otherwise, you're gonna either pass out or you're gonna cause a significant amount of muscle cramping and spasming. Oh, so gross. That's not how you use a plunger. There's actually this type of mechanism in the United States called a Lucas. Basically, it's a device that actually has a plunger suction cup that compresses down onto the chest and the machine actually will do the CPR for you. <laughs> or a bird. Oh my gosh. We got some gluteus maximus. Maybe just one glute. Muscle striations that you can see, all different types of glute muscle tissue. Bite wound from an animal, you definitely get it covered with antibiotics. Typically, we use Augmentin here in the United States, which is amoxicillin and clavulonic acid. Oh my gosh! Ripping of the forearm. What? Oh, the skin just came off. That is a total body degloving. Removal of the skin depends if it's a thick enough removal and total removal of the skin it means it still has its own blood supply. So there's a potential that you can reposition and put it back in, sew it back together and it reattach it. Happy tree friends. This show is nuts. I can't believe they come up with so many injuries in different ways that they hurt themselves. But these are different ways that people actually hurt themselves and they come into the hospital. So it's good for us to talk about it. Hopefully you learned something today. Also, big new things on the horizon. Check out my brand new supplement company, Life Happens. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn on those bell notifications and hit that like button for me. Thanks so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.